So it's loaded for someone. Hi, hi, one person. There. Oh, now it's live. I had to refresh it. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's what in the world's week? What six? Right. About yeah. Yeah. So, cool beans. Uh, don't mind me eating my carrots. Um, <laughs> uh, it is Easter weekend after all. Uh, so it's pretty fitting. I didn't, I didn't mean to have those two things correlate, but it is starting. Um, anyway, let's dive right in, shall we, Andrew? Yes, let's do it. Uh, four days ago, DC Universe announced that they're, uh, having a MOBA and it's going to come out later this year. Uh, it's apparently it's going to be a free-to-play style game, just like League of Legends. Um, and beta signups are already up and raring to go for those of you who want to get involved i'm pretty excited that means i get to play as wonder woman hopefully <laughs> maybe <laughs> probably uh, talk about injustice uh, i'm not so excited i mean then again i haven't really been into uh mobas that much lately but uh it'll probably be pretty fun because i'll i'm kind of interested in playing the flash or green lantern or superman of course Oh, well, yeah. Now, they haven't made it clear what, what playable characters they're going to be um, or if they're going to have customizable skins or anything, but I'm I'm sure we'll find out more as we go along. Uh, it makes me wonder, uh, because it's, it's talking about like uh, multiple universes, and I'm not really a comic person, but I know that, like, you know, there are, I guess there are different stories about everything, so I'm wondering if it's more than just skins, like, different, the same character, but the different uh, universe has different skills. I'm going to, like... I don't know, just for being a fan of comic books in general, I kind of like, are they going to show them, like, is one of their skins going to be, like, their everyday, like, out of out of uh, superhero gear, like, are they, or, you know, all that stuff, so, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what, what generation of each character are they going to go with? Because, I mean, I, I was, I, if anybody who watches, com you know, or reads comic books, you know, it's not always the same person... It's not always the same person being that that character, uh, even in the comic books. So, um, like, I don't know, Spider Man's went through like what seven different people playing Spider Man. Like, it's I don't know. so that's what. <laughs> so I mean, I, I, you have all those possibilities, and also, are there villains going to show up? What villains do you want to see? Like, it's kind of that cool. Yeah, so yeah, and speaking of Spider Man, it's like uh, it's funny that they're they're making a MOBA and uh, Marvel's doing an uh, action R uh, RPG. Mm-hmm. I wish, uh, I feel like th that comic books are finally getting into the realization that people actually like them. Like, yeah. <laughs> still, <laughs> like, you know, we may not be going out and buying physical copies anymore, but we still like to read them and, and be involved with them. So, um, that's why the movies are so successful, right? Right. So, uh, and it's in my purse, wherever that may be. Sorry. People are coming and going from my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, on to the next topic of subject, or subject, ah, fuck it. Um, the XCOM, XCOM is yes. going to become a fully functional, full game for your iPad and iPhones. Um, it's exactly the same game that you guys already have, if you have it. Um, if you don't have it already, I guess it's a good excuse to go play it, um, and it's going to be coming out really soon. It's it's actually kind of interesting. They were like um, talking about price points and how much it's going to cost. And they were like, it's going to be exactly as much as the actual game is because it is the full game. Um, yeah. Now they're talking about having um, like a uh, joystick, like being able to plug in stuff to your iPad and, and being able to play with your controllers and stuff like that. Oh, that um, cool. Yeah, so... I don't know. That's pretty interesting. I'm I'm excited to see that, but I already have XCOM, so I'm not going to go buy it for another thing. Yeah. Um. So I guess this is for people who don't really like console play or don't play PC. They just can play on their iPad, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Nope. Plants for zombies. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I play that on PC. <laughs> <laughs> I only have it on. Uh... Uh, tablet now and this uh the next article that we're going to talk about is actually something that i kind of wanted to just touch on in general I, uh silicon valley city offers free wi-fi via smart meters which means they are going to be able to track how much of their free service that you use and um in their city and it, it's an interesting concept because lots of places offer free wi-fi for their city usually it sucks 
Um, like yeah. here we have it. Um, I'm in a really small town. Um, but what essentially what they had to do is they had to put like little hubs all over town, right? And uh, and like even so go as far as to like pay people to put them inside their house. Um, but on a, a larger scale, like on a, a bigger city like this, um, it, it's kind of like parking meter kind of style. Yeah. And uh, and eventually, I mean, it may not always be free. That's one of the other things they were talking about. Um, it may be something that after so much usage, they start charging you or something like that, which would be interesting for the people that, uh, don't have internet at home. Um, yeah, definitely. and, and, and it'll be an easier way for them to access emails, to get jobs, that kind of stuff. So I'm, I guess we'll, the eye is on this, this city because of the, the, I don't know, the engineering way that they're going about doing, um, the whole thing, but it's kind of like that, how you, uh, measure usage anyway at home but on a larger scale and it said that it didn't actually cost them very much to do so so it i i don't know why stuff like this doesn't happen everywhere it's true but i mean just like the google fiber they only have it and do they have in certain cities or just kansas city right now i think it's still just kansas city okay yeah well i'd love to have that when you uh yeah <laughs> Obvious answer. Um. So I don't know. I look forward to maybe at some point having free internet. Period for yeah. like our country. Uh, now I don't know how about they're going to go about doing that, but I, I I feel like it's going to happen. Now it's probably going to suck, and <laughs> for a while. But when, when they work on it more, it'll probably be awesome. Yeah. So hey, that's something I look forward to, right? Yeah, definitely. Hopefully in our lifetime, right? Um, I don't remember which of us put this statistic up here, but we were I was reading this article earlier about oh, how yes. Facebook uh, says that their pay to play games, um, like like uh, the microtransactions that you have for like uh, oh, like okay. Farmville and stuff, have increased by twenty four percent, which is about one billion people wow that's crazy so i no the fact that like okay so my parents do this right they (laughs) they play like battle pirates and and all that and i i don't i don't understand paying for that like my dad is like well get you better ships and like all this Mm -hmm. stuff i'm like i guess that's the kind of gaming that i want i want the game companies to stay away from like I don't yeah, want basically no pay to win, right? Pay to pay to be better, pay to pay to get cool stuff, and well, you want it to be paid to get cool stuff, not pay to be better though, because well, cool stuff well, and better are usually yeah. go hand in hand. But but well, I mean like since... I use Call of Duty, like we were talking about that what two weeks ago, yeah, where they're they're introducing the microtransactions there, um, that those don't enhance your gameplay, but that's it's really close to that becoming that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. it, it's kind of scary. I mean, I hope they don't do that in more and more games because it's really going to be disappointing. And I'm cool. never going to spend my real life money to make my gameplay better. I just would like to be better at the game. Does that make yeah, sense? I'd, yeah, I'd rather have cosmetic or uh, maybe items that uh, offer convenience, but not it's like in a game where you can have a guild bank or, or, or a bank that would come to you out in the field. Something like that, but not something that would be like, you know, like, oh, hey, you can one-shot this monster every so often. Something like that. I don't know. They're trying to offer these. They're trying to use these statistics to get other games interested in in bringing their game to Facebook. Uh, You've seen it with a couple other things, like uh, you could play a Facebook game and then it'll unlock stuff for your, your Xbox game. Um, dra- uh, oh, I'm losing the game completely. What? Never mind. There's a couple of games like that. Um, and you, it unlocks cool stuff or gear or whatever. Not necessarily anything that would enhance your gameplay. Um, but unfortunately, you're probably going to see this more in the future because people are going, game companies are going to be like, there's money in this. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean... It's bad that they have to think like that, but at the same time, I guess 
Uh, I hope they'll realize that's just better to do cosmetics and people would rather pay for cosmetics and power. But the question is, what makes more money? Uh, the power or the cosmetics? I, I don't know. And then also, it depends on your demographic. Like, you're not yeah. going to get people who are uh, casual gamers. I'm going to use that word. Casual gamers who only play games like Plants vs. Zombies or Angry Birds. You're not necessarily going to get them in there to, uh, to be doing this stuff, I don't think. Yeah. Or, or I don't know. Because, I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, I wouldn't see something like Plants vs. Zombies anyway. But, well, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, though. Like, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I was trying to think of some super popular casual games. <laughs> and those are the only two that came to mind. Uh, Be- <laughs> Bejeweled and all those. Those are already on Facebook, and you can pay to, to enhance your gameplay on those. Yeah, I mean, I do hope that they will actually decide to, um, or people will decide to develop for Facebook, because right now none of the games really seem... I know, I, I don't think I've seen any RPGs on there either, like turn-based RPGs because those are tend to be my favorite. They're more of a energy-based. Oh, hey, you you battle and not, you don't choose what you do in that battle. It's just an auto battle. League is a very good example, Professor. They, uh, you know, you pay for skins. It's all cosmetic that you pretty much pay for, um, and. It does. It doesn't help you gameplay unless I mean, unless you can claim that you know having Imperial Lux increases your gameplay. Uh, that they make tons of money off of that, and it's all cosmetic. So yeah, that's that. That's all. I wanted to rant a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this is an interesting topic. Yeah, you go for you go talk about that one. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, you don't, don't you want to talk about the other one first? What? You skipped one. Oh, well, that's along the same lines. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's something. The Diablo 3 director... Hold on, I'm opening up the link. The Diablo 3 director admits that the auction house really hurt the game. Um, that is to say, paying real-life money for in-game items. Like what we were just I talking mean... about. Um, now, of course, you don't have to. But it kind of, this is exactly what, as soon as they said, oh yeah, we're going to have the auction house and this is what its functionalities are going to be and blah, 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 blah. I was like, this is going to get abused. Uh, and it did. Uh, and the only reason it did was, I'm guessing, because they uh, finally released PvP. Am I right? I mean, just, I mean, they don't even talk about that. It's just... Well, I mean, I wouldn't see it a problem if, uh, if all of the... The only problem is uh, it's PvP because I mean, if you're playing solo, it doesn't really matter that it would. How is it hurting the game exactly? Are they saying? I mean, by playing through the game, that's how you get better gear. Right. Um, and just like in World of Warcraft, you have your auction house. You can buy stuff with your gold. However, you can just use your money to buy your. I mean, you can just buy use real life money to buy those things to make the game easier. And I guess the thing that I have a problem with is. It feels like cheating. <laughs> it, it really does feel like cheating. And not only that, I mean, statistically, when they, they started introducing this, it, it's one of the things that people complain about the most. Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate. And I, I mean, it was probably a good idea at the time, but just... Because I'm sure a lot of people, you know, who play games, sometimes they don't have enough time, and they want to play, but... They don't want to have to grind for an uh, awesome item, so but they have the money to spend for it. So, I mean, I don't have the money to pay for that stuff, so nobody should. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you found this article, I believe. Yes, it's quite the interesting one, and I'll link it in chats. Where do you so, find this stuff? Yes, uh, basically, um. <laughs> I still find this story uh, really interesting. Uh, Jason, uh, I hope I'm saying it real rare or something like that, uh, he designed a game that was apparently not meant to be played for 2,000 years as it says in the title. Um, 
It's called A Game for Someone, and he buried it somewhere in the Nevada desert, which is really I, interesting. He apparently gave uh, tons of people at uh, GDC uh, GP, uh, GPS locations. I think like 3,000 in total, was it? Uh, well, but yeah, it was a lot. It was uh, many different locations in the Nevada desert. And basically, he expects if uh, one person uh, goes every day uh, and checks a location on the GPS, uh, the GPS location they got, it would take 2,400 years to find. But uh, I kind of find it funny that he uh, didn't think it... I mean, I, it sounds like he wouldn't really have thought it through, because if... Every, the gaming community is so, so big that they would get together and probably find it even sooner. But it makes me wonder, like, how bad it could be that if they're just digging up randomly everywhere in the Nevada desert. <laughs> it would be kind of funny to see them all out there. That would be like the movie Holes where you see, like, just everywhere. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it, it, I mean, reading about it, yeah. is interesting and then like I'm surprised he didn't like I don't know if I had done something like this I would have like scattered pieces of it like everywhere <laughs> it's true I mean like you have to find them all to play this yeah. game I mean especially since he gave like 3,000 locations it, yeah. it would be a game itself to find the different pieces because now this way that, that's exactly what I'm saying because everyone would be searching for it at the same time instead of per day it's going to be uh, much faster than 2,400 years I think I mean, I guess it depends. It depends on uh, how many people are really interested in finding that uh, out about it. Um, What's even more interesting is that he has not played the game himself. Right! So I was reading that. It says, the board game was created by uh, programming the rules into a computer and letting the AI find the balance issues. Then, uh, and, and then, Iterate. like, Iterate. so literally only a computer's ever really knows how to beat the game or, or how to how well, to do it. Well, computers always know how to beat the game. Um, that ensured that he would never play. It was created on an 18 by 18 inch board and pieces from titanium copied the rules uh, on acid free paper, sealed the pages inside a Pyrex tube and then put the tube inside a titanium baton and then he buried it somewhere in the desert. Like that's, it seems a little extreme. I think so because one of the biggest things is <clears throat> Does he really think it's meant to be? Uh, it, it's not ready for until two thousand years, really. And then not only that, I mean, I'm sure technology is going to change a lot in two thousand years. But maybe he, maybe he, he says two thousand years, but I think he probably expects it to be uh, sooner. Uh, that's the only thing I can expect. M maybe it's a, a Rick Ashley song, actually. <laughs> Never gonna give you up. Yeah. Never gonna let you down. No. <laughs> this is not karaoke Wednesday. Oh no. All right, so we have uh, another. Uh, I, I found this earlier, and I can't believe I saw it, but I have to share it with you, and I'll post it in the chat. Oops, hold on. Bacon mouthwash. Yeah, I did like the fry face, like the meme. I was like. Not sure if April Fools yeah. are a real thing, <laughs> because okay. the bacon thing with the internet and like, and and people in general is getting a little out of hand. I mean, you have bacon chewing gum for God's sakes, so. Which makes me wonder: could this really be a real thing? However, when I uh, looked at the comments, um, oh, they're gone now that I'm looking at it. Uh, the scope replied. Um, <clears throat> one person said, "You know, it's a." Or, you know, it's uh, April Fool's is close by, and they were like, is it? You know, just, it's a, they said, is it, but I... I had yeah, it was very place. playful. I saw it, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't really know what's up with that. I hope it's kind of real, because I want to try it. Well, you know what? I think I would want... I just... I, my mind is like, no way is this happening. I have to try it if it is real. But it it is April 20... Or April. Uh, it is March 29th. And it's very possible. Yeah, and the they, video was posted yesterday. Yeah, and, and that, that's what makes me wonder. It's like, are they trying to do it early so it makes it for a better April Fool's joke? That they'll just say on April 1st that, oh, hey, it's not actually a, a thing. Sorry. Yeah, that was pretty funny. The bacon portrait of Kevin Bacon. Yes. 
the video is really funny. If you guys have the time, it's only like two minutes long. You just go watch it. <laughs> if I ever become a zombie, I'm eating your friend's arm. Um, <laughs> so, so on to the next piece of business. I'm going to yes. rant for about 10 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> probably about 10 minutes. Uh, you heard a lot about it on Wednesday during Thrill Screen, but I'm going to reiterate pretty much everything Dom had to say. Uh, Bioshock Infinite. I'm not going to spoil anything. So you don't have to leave the page. Um, but this, I mean, because I'm not done with it. So <laughs> uh, how could I spoil it? Uh, <laughs> it is hands it down the most beautiful game I've ever played. It took the, it, they took what they did for the first game, which was, uh, they, I mean, if you played the first game, it was, it was decrepit and run down because it was supposed to be, but it, game looks wise, you got that. It, it really sets you there. Um, this is just the opposite of that. It's beautiful. Like you, you, the first five minutes in this game, I literally had to stop in awe and go like, oh my god, like, this is, this is, this is insane, this is beautiful. And I had all the settings set really down. And, um, I mean, because I was streaming it, right? Yeah. And, I mean, um, uh, no spoilers here, but, like, when the first five minutes, you're in this underground church that's in, like, the sewers, and, but it's, it's still just beautiful! Like, and the sound, the music, and the sounds, and the livelihood of the city, I mean, you yeah. really feel like you're there. And yeah, it is crazy. one thing Kyle mentioned uh, on Wednesday was that, like, once a piece of music is gone in this game, it's gone. Like, you only get to hear those sounds once. You only get to hear that once. Um, <clears throat> and that it's really like a real environment. Then later on in the game, you get, this is, again, not a spoiler because you see it in the trailer, you get Elizabeth, right? And she is just the most badass chick you will ever play a video game with. I mean, she puts Laura Croft to shame. <laughs> wow. uh, I'm not spoiling anything. <laughs> Never saw the trailer. And, and she, I mean, like, she puts Laura Croft to shame. And uh, I played on uh, both, dif I played on medium difficulty for the stream because I didn't want to look like an idiot. And then I've been playing on hard. Um, hard is exactly what it sounds like. It It's actually like running out of uh, ammo, running out of health and dying and, and having to come back and, and having to choose which weapon you're going to pick up and go next because you know what's coming up next. Like, it's, it's actually difficult. And um, overall, like, I'm surprised it got a 9.5. I'm surprised it didn't get a 10 out of 10. Um... It is, I mean, game of the year, probably. Like, now, I have been waiting on this game forever, it seems like. It's like, it's like the video game equivalent of Cabin in the Woods. Like, I waited on that movie for fucking ever. And then, like, <laughs> I waited on this game forever. They kept pushing it back and not telling me when it was released. And I was really sad. It was damn worth the wait. Well, that's always good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I mean, if you guys haven't played it, go play it. Oh my god, get the soundtrack too. It's amazing. Uh yeah, that's and, and there's easter eggs. Uh if you guys know what I mean, like there's there's like little uh like nods to things uh in it and those are awesome uh, if you're paying attention. Um there's also like sometimes they they do some fun stuff and get you out of the time period. Um be aware of the time period that this game is in that they are uh you are in almost this cult type area and they're extremely racist um so i mean if you don't know it's it's that's part of the game then you should know that um because it it's a huge part of what's going on uh in the game and but it it, it furthers the plot so that's towelette <laughs> sorry i'm looking at chat um <clears throat> So that's that's my <laughs> that's my spiel on that. Um, Your ten minute, right? Or, <laughs> yes. So, do you want to talk about the uh, humble bundle? Yeah. Um, 
So it's Nivyet's deals spot. Yeah. I haven't I didn't we didn't do this like the last two weeks, so I have some awesome news for you guys. If you haven't heard of the Humble Bundle, you are about to now. Linked in chat. Um so if you have ever played Darksider or if you ever wanted to play Darksiders or Darksiders 2 or Red Faction, right now you can buy the uh, buy the bundle and donate to charity or donate to the um, uh, the game developers or d donate to the Humble Bundle itself and it's for like $8 I believe it's about $8 and it comes with 4 games and Darksiders 2 itself is like 50 right now? Maybe $40? Uh, I, I can't remember but that's better than when it's normally on sale on Steam for like 15 Yeah. So, and I believe it gives you a DRM free copy. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, because I know normal Humble Bundles do, but I don't think the weekly one does. The, which uh, is a new thing they're doing. The last week was Bastion. Uh, no idea what's next, but it's, it refreshes every Tuesday. And it goes so, to a really good charity, right? It, the yeah, Child's Play. Exactly. They, uh, they get video games and ga video game consoles for sick kids in hospitals. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I feel like that's amazing because, like, coming from somebody who was in the hospital, like, two years of her life when she was 11, like, that would have been awesome. <laughs> and in fact, uh, it's uh, not just a child's play, it's also the American Red Cross. I'm not sure if uh, they split the donations or you can choose, uh, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely cool. And not only that, they have more than just the weekly sale right now, they have the Humble Mobile Bundle, which... It's probably the first thing you saw when you went to the website. Uh, currently, uh, they ha they have Plants vs Zombies, Blade Slinger, Anomaly Korea, The Room, Metal Slug Three, and I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So do keep in mind, uh, like unlike the normal Android bundles, that they do not offer a Steam code. It's only for uh, Android phones. Uh, you would have to. Uh, receive them using Bummer. A, a yeah, I know. I was, I was actually really sad. I kind of wanted uh, Plants for Zombies on my I know. Uh, PC. I did I too. I PC, but I didn't get it. So, But yeah, definitely check out these bundles. They're really awesome. I mean, I've been wanting Dark Stars 2 for the longest time, and I'm looking at it now. It's apparently $7. Uh, if you pay more than $7, you can get uh, all, all those uh, Dark Siders, Dark, uh, or Red Faction, Armageddon, if you pay more than $1. And then, if you pay more than uh, the average, uh, Dark Siders two and Red Faction, uh, the I think it's another DLC. So it looks like two DLCs. It looks awesome. I'm gonna get. It. Yep. I can't resist though. Like <laughs> most of the in indie bundles, I'm like, oh yes, give me, give me. Yeah. Seriously. Um. So let me try to get, um, our guest on here. Um. And She's we'll start talking to her. Still hiding from the spoilers. So we'll take Andrew's webcam away. Ooh, okay. Well, it works for now, but it won't. I promise. So. <laughs> I'm here still. Yeah, I know. I have to avoid... Um, Showing Skype. Yes. Sorry, you guys. Are you there, madam? Maybe. She picked up, but I can't hear her. Hello? There we go. Hello. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> We're good. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. Hold on. I'm fixing Andrew's photo here. Yeah, I noticed I was missing. <laughs> there we go. Well, because I can't show Skype. So, there we go. We're all set up. How are you today, ma'am? I am very well, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this is my first time catching your guys' show, so I was really interested. Glad to sit in a little early to see what you guys do here. And thank you so much for having me on your show. Super excited to be here. So, uh, for let's get right into it then, shall we? Um, for, can you tell people um, a little bit about yourself? Who are you? Um, my name is Emily. My in-game name is Octavia. I run Pentacast Productions. 
which is a League of Legends gaming community featured around game nights, which is what we do. We do two game nights a week. Um, we do a Riot vs. Community event on Wednesdays and a community game night on Tuesdays, which is super exciting. And um, I've been a League player for about two years now. I'm old school. <laughs> <laughs> I think I started playing back when Zinzao came out, all the way back, way back, ancient history. <laughs> and um, huge gamer girl, always been. Ever since I got a Sega when I was like five, <laughs> I was madly in love with anything video game related. And I'm, but I'm still that way. <laughs> so what what's got you uh, started into actually playing video games? Because uh, I know a lot of people have interesting stories. Do you have an interesting story? Basically, I'm an only child. And when I was born, my dad really wanted a boy. And lo and behold, I was not a guy. <laughs> so uh, he knew I wouldn't be interested in like football or anything like that. So video games were like the way we could connect. And he bought a Sega when I was in kindergarten. And we used to play Madden football together. <laughs> but since it was on a video game, like it was way more interesting to me. I used to play like Sega and stuff like that. And it was a way to really connect since I wasn't really that tomboyish. I'm really girly, so he had his work cut out for him. <laughs> <laughs> but through gaming, we could really bond, and he made a big effort to kind of keep up with the games I was playing and showing interest, and uh, it just kind of took off from there. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Sounds similar to my stories, but <laughs> mine's because of my brother's a big jerk. Uh, <laughs> um uh, as it's no surprise to you that uh, Andrew and I are both in Rise Up Gaming, so we are interested in knowing how do you stay so positive in the negative gaming environment? Well, you really have to focus on the fact that as many people that are like angry and frustrated in the gaming world, there are way more positive, influential upbeat people who just want to enjoy the game, just want to, you know, cooperate and like work together gaming is way more fun when you're like not hounding each other you're actually working toward a goal especially League of Legends which is very much a team game based mm -hmm, around yeah. cooperation between five individuals so when you have the one person or the you know the people that are really just kind of being hard on you and stuff like that, you have to remember that there are more positive folks that after that game, the next game, you might not have those kind of people. You'll have a great game with lots of people that are willing to work with you and yeah. cheer you on. Those are the people I surround myself with. All of my friends are very calm, cheerful people who understand that gaming is something they want to do. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't make you angry if you enjoy it. Exactly. That's true. Um, Speaking of friends, have you ever had real life friends being toxic in a in a game you played? Yeah, I think we all have. Unfortunately, uh, they're typically the people where, in a real life situation, they would not be angry, they would not be upset, but because the gaming scene is so competitive and there's so much pressure on you to do well, not only for the four teammates that you're working at, again, referring to League of Legends, but even in, like, Call of Duty and stuff like that, where you really want to support your team, there's a lot of pressure there, and a lot of folks right. don't really know how to cope with that, so they do get angry. And everyone's upset when they don't do well. Everyone has a game where, unfortunately, maybe they got camped bottom lane, and now they're behind, and that frustration translates to it's not my fault, it's everyone else's fault. Mm -hmm. So I had a friend who was pretty toxic, and of course that led to I didn't want to play with that person, I wasn't having a good time. It's contagious. When one person is angry and upset, everyone else feels that way as well, and that's not something you really want to do. And he has since improved. He stopped playing League of Legends for a while, tried to kind of work out his issues, and now he plays very casually and a lot less angrily, so I'm really proud of him. Oh, that's good. That's good, yeah, definitely. I love, I love hearing those stories actually when like you have people who like completely change and I always I always st tell people like start with taking like a break even if it's just a day um, yeah. just like get away from whatever is making you angry and, and come back to it and have a newfound appreciation for it because um, it's 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 uh I well I, I have to word this correctly but your angry anger is directly 
connected to you and not really other people most of the time. Um, it's usually people who are really frustrated at themselves and not actually the other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that that's what makes them the most angry and that's why they get so upset. Um, and But they just lash out at everybody else. Yes, it definitely contributes as well. Say you have a hard day at work and when you get home you just want to log into league and play your favorite champion and then someone calls your lane and then it snowballs from there. You get into the game, you're not doing really well because you don't feel well and then you take it out on other folks and it's just, mm. it's not good. Nope. <laughs> you really have to, I find myself doing this as well, you have to stop, you have to think about the situation, you have to understand that it's not the game that's really making you upset and then go from there. Um. So you're you're usually in the public eye. I mean, you do. I, mean, I say that because you know Twitch is uh, particularly harsh with its viewers sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, how? I mean, have you ever had any situations where you're you've been like bullied on there, and how did you deal with it? Uh, it feels like the more popular Pentacast production be- becomes, the more critique that we garner, and unfortunately a lot of it is not positive critique. It's a lot (laughs) easier to mock someone than it is to positively give them, you know, feedback. So um, the bigger we get, the more folks are kind of coming down on us about the accuracy of our shout casting, um, you know, from very small things to you just said ultimate and you didn't actually say graves collateral damage so we're gonna make fun of you to like you know bigger things where they're mocking us for our personality and maybe like how we are in real life and they don't they don't know us but it's way easier to do that and you just have to understand that unfortunately it is human nature it is gonna occur and you can't take it personally if you take it personally you're not gonna be in this organization for very long because it's something that you have to understand and not lash back out at them and continue the hate cycle you have to just stop it there and say you are entitled to your opinion and move on yep that's exactly it I'm trying to um coach some people in streaming uh, right now and and that's one of the things I'm like you may have four viewers now but eventually you're gonna have 400 and (laughs) and they're gonna be awful and mean and not nice to you and you have to you have to know how to deal with that but again there's so many positive wonderful people um I don't know if you guys know but our last game night we broke our record and we had 2,000 people watching yeah I was there (laughs) you were one of the 2,000 yes but for every one person that was complaining about the quality or our casting or anything that might bug them, there were five more people saying, oh my gosh, thank you for doing this for the community. I will be here next week. You guys are amazing. And you just got to focus on the positive and not the negative. Absolutely. Um, so now I'm going to start asking you questions about the casting. <laughs> uh, so, um, before before you started doing pin to cast and all that, what attracted you initially to actually shout casting games? I was I was recruited. Actually, what happened was I was watching an old stream called Amateur. It was an, Amateur Tournament um, series. Amateur Tournament series. That's what it is. It's so old and so long ago. And I was in the chat, and I was talking to the folks that were in the chat, and I was explaining uh, certain fight mechanics and like how certain champions worked. And the folks that were running it were like, "Hey, do you do you cast? Like, what's going on here?" And I was like, "No, I just like I love League of Legends, and I love learning, <laughs> so I'm fairly knowledgeable about the game." And uh, you guys might know Mr. L3IRD Bird was there, and he kind of scooped me up and took me under his wing. And like slowly taught me how to cast in front of a bunch of people, which um, I just I was interested because uh, I have a past in acting. Acting and public speaking is always something that I've been really interested in. And if I can combine that with my favorite hobby, gaming, that's my dream job. <laughs> like, exactly. That was two amazing elements that you can just kind of combine. Plus, of course, I've always been a huge fan of Freak and Rivington and D-Man and the Hat Person and all of those folks. They've always been really influential to me. And um, it just went from there. I was super nervous the first time. And <laughs> that, I was casting for Alienware. I was casting for... Um, 
dominate dominion i was just everywhere it like hit me like a rock and then i just kept going <laughs> awesome i i always like hearing those stories like how did you start out well it was this like <laughs> um so can you tell us about pentacast like in general um what what is it for people who don't know <sighs> pentacast started with five gamers who were shoutcasters getting together in a room and saying, you know what, we should make this something concrete. Like, we, sh we were all pursuing our own side projects. We were all casting for different kinds of things. And at this point, um, I knew that I was ready to move on past amateur tournament. Like, I wanted to do something bigger, something that was progressive, something that was going somewhere. And the easiest way to do that, well, maybe not the easiest, but for us, was to make our own, to start our own organization that could cast and stream game nights. So we all got together, we came up with the name Pentacast because there were five of us, and uh, we thought it was fairly catchy, and we started organizing game nights, which was pretty awesome. And uh, slowly but surely, uh, the other casters pursued their own side projects and kind of left Pentacast, and ultimately it was just me left. <laughs> And um, everyone was like, no, we love Riot vs. Community. Please don't drop the ball. Keep it going. My fans were so supportive. And slowly but surely, I started recruiting other people. I rebuilt the team. I have wonderful, wonderful team under me right now. And we have just exploded. Like, we are just rocketing out of the water right now. Yeah. In a brand new graphic artist. She's fantastic. Her work is amazing. You guys see the overlays and the backgrounds and all the digital art we have is courtesy of her. Her name is Care. Uh, I brought in Skill Factory. You guys all know him. He's amazing. Yeah. He's the best co-caster I could ever ask for. <laughs> um, and he hosts the stream. He uh, is a, a wonderful personality to work with. And, uh, and we just hit the, we hit the ground running. We popped up a website. We started uh, pulling in more and more riders for our life. We started Community Game Night to showcase player-created game modes. And bam, <laughs> we're still going. Yeah. Which is awesome. So who all um, is involved in Pentacast at the moment? Well, uh, we have myself. I pretty much run it. Um, I also do our creative writing. I do a lot of our social networking and communications. Uh, as I mentioned, Skill Factory is the host of our stream, one of them. He is my co-host, my co-caster. He handles all of our financial stuff and um, a lot of our video editing. Then we have Care, as I mentioned. She's our graphic artist. She is our uh, another financial advisor because I'm horrendous with money. You just ask my bank account <laughs> and the shoes in my room. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's uh, and we we have a couple of interns and of course we have our wonderful team of mods that mod the chat for us. And that's uh, that's our core group right now. That's what we're working with. Awesome. Um, one of my favorite things about uh, Riot versus Community is when you guys started asking the question that you had to answer in order to get invited. Um, what made you guys start doing that and who comes up with the question? Basically what happened was when we had a smaller, when we only had like a hundred folks a night, it was really easy to just drop some trivia into the chat and the first five people who can answer it would come into the room. Well, as we got more folks, there was stream lag. There were people that didn't necessarily have audio. There was folks that, you know, their browsers couldn't keep up. Slow mode wasn't working. It was a nightmare. <laughs> so we all sat down and came up with the idea of having a weekly raffle question where, as you mentioned, uh, you click the link, you answer it. You don't have to get it right to qualify. It's just a fun way to kind of teach you guys something and also get a list of people who are eligible to play. And uh, I do all the trivia. <laughs> I do all the trivia every week. Um, Leaguepedia is one of the hugest sites that I always <laughs> because they are so helpful in just kind of picking up useful pieces of trivia. And that's why we do it. It's way more fair at the end of the night, or at the start of the show, at the end of the week. We just take all the names and we randomize them in uh, random.org. And then we just invite going down the list, and that's the easiest way to do it. Huh? I always wondered how how that worked, but I, you know, I I was always just like, oh, I didn't get invited. <laughs> Two thousand people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my friends are like, can I get the hookup? And I'm like, no, 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 it has to 
be fair. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's a weird position to be in. So you guys have had um, some really good moments. I've watched you guys uh, replays on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, what is your favorite moment verse, uh, during Riot vs. Community so far? Hmm. Um, I really enjoy the banter that goes on between the rioters and the community where they start <laughs> trash talking. And it's always really friendly. Like the rioters are basically saying, you guys are going down. And then it gets like a professional wrestling thing where it's like, next week, you're going to go down. And the community's like, Psh, no, bring it on. We're totally going to, you know, win. And it's just, it's good natured, fun kind of, it motivates everyone to be excited about it. So um, after all of this trash talking goes down, one night we had uh, a Tristana get a pentakill versus the rioters and every rioter was like you know what you get a skin code and that was probably <laughs> the best night so far because the rioters after all the trash talking was like you killed us all fair and square you get a code good job and it was like recognizing that community member for outplaying them and that was humbling it was really wonderful yeah that just sound awesome Cookie dough with chocolate ice cream and mint chocolate chip mixed in. That sounds so good. I, I, I love some. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, besides uh, the obvious Riot versus Community that you're doing now, um, is there any other projects that we have to look forward to? I, um, you guys know, last Wednesday was actually a special Riot vs. Community, which was called Beast Wars, which was set up between me, Riot Scarzard, and Riot Shunzilla. And this was different than normal. They were a pre-made team, essentially. Like, all the five riders knew each other, had played with each other before, um, and were kind of in the same department at Riot. And normally, I asked a variety of riders to come. That way, you know, we get somebody from player support, somebody from accounting. Like, it's really fun to kind of get different skill levels and get to know folks from all over the place. But uh, because they were a pre-made, they were giving out skins as prizes. And, um... That's that's pretty much the big event that we want to do once a month. Now, I've talked to Scarzard. He thought the turnout was amazing, and he wants to work with me to do it at least once a month. And I wow. am so on that wagon. <laughs> like, I'm so excited. I know everyone had a great time. It was an amazing opportunity for us and for the community to get to play. So we're going to possibly be locking that down and doing that once a month. And uh, next uh, Tuesday, we are having what we're calling Battle of the Yordles. Now everybody knows the Yordles band. Yes. Sunny and Miles, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, they are gonna come and play against the community. We're gonna put a Yordle on each team and we're gonna have three game modes and it's gonna be hilarious. Those are the two things that are really cooking for us right now. Cool, that sounds so awesome. Exciting. I'm actually gonna have to tune in for that. For yes. sure. <laughs> Um, I guess our last and final thing, um, if you wouldn't mind in our chat, if you could link everybody to where they can follow you and Pentacast and where they can, uh, come and say anything. And if you want to give a shout out or say anything to anybody, now would be the time. Okay. Um, I want to give a shout out to all of my rider friends because they are just remarkable. They literally are the, the sole reason that we're able to do what we do. If they didn't show up on Wednesday, we wouldn't have a game night. So they're all remarkable. They're always so positive and such a good influence on the community. And I just want to thank everyone who, uh, especially all the riders that like week one and two were like, what is this? Who are you? I don't know what this is. And came anyway and just yeah. kind of gave us that leg up to really get where we are. So I want to thank those guys. Uh, I want to thank the community for coming as well, because guess what? This is for you. We do this out of the goodness of our heart. We're not actually getting paid for anything right now. Even our website is self-sufficient right now. No ads, no nothing. This is purely for the community to have a chance to play with the, the people that created the game that everyone loves and to also get some uh, FaceTime during community game night. So thank them for being so supportive and following us and supporting our social media and all that good stuff. And uh, thank you to all my friends that are in the chat right now <laughs> that came to support me during my interview today. You guys are amazing. Exactly. We were so happy to have you. I, I, of course, I, I know you and Duncan. So it was really, <laughs> it's nice to, it's nice to get everybody involved in to all the things we're doing. You know, um, I, I really enjoy it. Also, um, this will be uploaded onto YouTube soon. So if anybody missed it, they'll be able to see it. And also, all of our past broadcasts are there on our YouTube channel. Wow. Um, and 
I don't know. Andrew, can you think? Oh, Andrew, yes. talk about Teamy then. Yes. Uh, if you haven't heard by now, I'm going to post the link in the chat. Uh, we are doing a, a seven-day uh, marathon for uh, Team Ethan. Uh, we're we're going to try to raise money, and uh, there'll be a lot of giveaways. It'll be uh, really, really fun. So please uh, make sure to come and support us, and uh, you'll, you'll have a lot of fun watching everyone. So, yeah, seven come. days, 24 hours, uh, yes. April 21st through the 28th. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. It's it's gonna be huge, and I can't wait. And I'm scheduling it right now, <laughs> and it's almost a nightmare. But I love it. There's so many cool prizes that I wish I could tell people about, but I can't. I and uh, right. but you guys are just gonna have to show up and be here for it. Uh, One the, of the prizes is a, is a Gina cake. And it, it's not, but. <laughs> <laughs> he's lying but if you want me to like sign posters and stuff i'll do that but <laughs> um but uh and i could probably get them signed by other people too i don't know but uh just like yeah and it's for a really good cause guys um we're gonna start probably doing uh a charity marathon maybe once a month or and once every two months um and this one's for a really good cause ethan is a, a little boy who has hodgkin's lymphoma and he's really sick and uh, it's for it's all for him, and he's a little superhero guy, and he's awesome. So, um, other than that, that, I think that's the end of our show. Awesome! Yes. Thank you guys again for having me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for coming. Thank you, awesome. and bye, everybody.